Um, well, hello there, Codemaker4 here. So often I get some questions about all of the mods that I use for scrap mechanic logic. Yeah, very important. So I still don't clean up after myself, apparently. By the way, this is the SMPU. Go check it out. It's uh, a computer I made. Uh, I use a lot of mods to make making large amounts of connections easier. Um, and in this video, I'll be going into the most important mod of them all, and that's Vincent's Logic Box and Parts mod. Let's go to the uh, mod menu. So, these are the mods I use often, but specifically for this tutorial, we're going to uh, stick to Vincent's Logic Tools and Parts mod. This already has like 70% of the tools that you'll be using often. The mod comes in three flavors. There's a normal version, the testing version and the early access version. Honestly, I'm not quite sure which things are on which anymore. What you do is you either only have the normal version enabled or you have the normal version and the testing version enabled because the testing version adds a few new uh, blocks and tools. Or third option, which is the one I recommend, is that you use the testing option together with the early access version. So having both the normal version and the early access version on at the same time, that will not work. They're incompatible because they kind of override stuff from each other. So use testing and early access. Now, as you can see, there are other mods over here, but I'm going to get into those in later videos. Uh, for now, it's mainly about Vincent's tools. Now, once you have the mods opened, you'll see that in the mod parts section over here, we'll have a few blocks and stuff. And the most important thing we have here is the Logic Multi-Tool, which is kind of a GUI, which is basically the thing you'll use most often. Uh, so let's get into how this all works. Oh, we don't want to do that. One thing about the Logic Multi-Tool is that one of the features kind of involves converting creations. Um, so let's quickly do that in the yard so that they don't have to kind of uh, point at the lab. I don't want to accidentally convert the lab. If I place down a few normal um, timers, let's, I don't know, make like this little epilepsy generator thingo. Um, so as you can see, I've now created some flashing logic. This is great and all, um, but what if this logic is much more complicated and I would like to kind of slow it down and step through it tick by tick. Well, that's what the quick logic is for. So um, basically one of the things the mod adds is it adds these quick logic gates, which are basically exactly the same as all of the normal gates. They even managed to uh, copy the GUI over. Um, but as you can see, the connections are green. They behave the exact same. Biggest difference is that you can grab this single step button and you can step through it. Um, you can also press U for upgrade on this button to increase the speed of the logic um, so you can see in the bottom left there, there's the, the speed factor. Uh, this can go as high as your computer can handle. Um, so for yeah, for something small like this, yeah, now it's starting to lag out a bit. So you can also just press E for single step to reset it. And then single steps. Now converting between this and vanilla is made very easy with the logic converter, which is the first function of the logic multi-tool. So you can left click to convert everything to quick logic. And now as you can see, that will now step as well. And you can also undo this. So with a right click, you can convert it to vanilla. And then it, it doesn't step anymore whilst this is still stepping. And you can like save this on the lift and export it. And people can load it without mods being installed. So th this all works fine. Uh, second thing of the multi-tool is it, if you press Q, you can switch through all of the functions and we'll get into them. Um, with the Q, you can open settings. And you can do a few fancy things like you can install some extensions for the logic tool, the paint tool, and the hammer. So in the logic tool, uh, what I usually use is show the amount of connections. So what this does is that if you look at a, a thing, you can see how many inputs and outputs it has. This is very useful for like checking if all the gates have the correct number of inputs and outputs, which can be an easy way of checking if like you accidentally made a wrong connection. Okay, now the tool has a few options for uh, manipulating connections. So let's place on a few gates that we want to connect together in the correct orientation. 
So say we want to make a parallel connection between these four gates. Now I could do this manually. And for four bits, that's fine. But if you're working with eight or 16 or 32 bit systems, it quickly gets tedious. So there is the parallel logic connect tool. So what you do is you just follow the instruction. So select the start of the first row of logic parts and then select the end. Then select the start of the second row and the end of the second row. And it gives a little bit of a preview of which gate it's going to connect. So the green O's um, are kind of the start and finish and the numbers in between uh, are the gates that will also be, con be connected. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and it will connect those. If I then press left click to confirm, it will make all of those connections. Um, you can also press G to toggle between connecting and disconnecting. So if you now use disconnect, it's going to remove all of those connections. The fourth option of this tool is to make a series connection. So this is if you want to connect a lot of logic gates in a row. So I can, have, I can just do this. You'll need to select one row. And if you make the connection, you can see that now each logic gate is connected in sequence. This is also useful sometimes. And of course, you can use the same trick of G for disconnect. Oh, then there's block merge. I'll get into that later. Um, but first, let's do the end-to-end -end connection tools. This is very similar to parallel connect, except that it doesn't matter if you select a different number of inputs and outputs. So let's, for demonstration purposes, only select three on the output. So as you can see, it's making connections between all inputs and outputs. So that's a big difference between parallel and end-to-end. -end. And sometimes you want to make a lot of connections just to a single logic gate. So let's place a few more and then like a single logic gate. Uh, for that, you can also use end-to-end. -end, and you just select that single gate twice. So I click twice on it, then make the connections. Then as you can see, now to block merge. Say you have like some sort of complicated logic creation and it has an input. And you have another complicated logic creation and it has an output. And you, and of course, they all come with the inputs and outputs ready to make sure that you only have to make one connection to connect them up or only one set of connections. However, this AND gate here isn't really doing anything useful. It only has one input, so it's not really computing anything. It is, however, wasting time. If you're like really starting to get into speed of logic creations, you might want to consider removing this logic gate. Now, you could do this manually by first taking note of all of the connections it has, then removing this logic gate and manually adding the connections. But there's also a tool that does it automatically, and that's called the block merge. So this is only for one block at a time. What you do is you point at the block you want to kind of remove, and you click on it. And as you can see, it kind of gives a red and green outline of all of the inputs and outputs. And you click on it again to confirm. And then as you can see, what it has done is it has created all of the intermediate connections. So this logic circuit will behave in the exact same way, but it will be one tick faster. Now the logic tools and parts mod also has like a lot of um, blocks that give similar functionality. So for example, there's this parallel connections. And instead of you selecting the gates with the tool, um, you paint them with the paint tool. And then uh, once you're done painting with the paint tool, you can uh, press on this logic gate to make the connections. This is kind of from, this is mostly from before the um, logic multi-tool was a thing. Some of these blocks do things that the logic multi-tool can't do. Um, and you can use it in connection with the mountable painter uh, guns to automatically create connections. You, you can make a machine that makes connections. Um, here, let, let's demonstrate this. So I'll have to this, uh, what you do is, for this you can follow the instructions. It's usually pretty clear. Place this twice in creation, connect them together, uh, then paint them with the colors that you want to connect the stuff. Um, so say I want to connect um, all green logic gates to all red logic gates. What I do is I place down a, a green and a red a color connect tool i connect them together and then of course you can just press e to make the connections it says made four connections yeah so let's um let's kind of remove those again but you can also do this with a button input or like any other logic input 
So like imagine making a creation that uses the mountable painter, which will, I guess it just kind of clones its own color onto stuff. Yeah, that's a valid interface. So it clones its own color onto other blocks. You can use the mountable painter in combination with this to automatically create connections, which of course sounds very complicated, but especially if you want to like do stuff without making use of external blueprint editing, um, it's, it can be a fun way and maybe sometimes like the best way to create some sort of complicated logic creations automatically. Um, so Vincent's logic tools and parts mod already has a, a lot of very useful. Well, one last thing is that there is a kind of memory uh, thing inside of the mod. So let's quickly show how this works. For that, you need the RAM block and the interface block. So this is, I'd say, the only like kind of cheaty thing that the mod adds uh, when, uh, when it comes to like uh, logic functionality. The rest is like only for like make helping in making uh, um, new logic in vanilla. Um, so we need uh, an address input, data input, data output, and a few triggers. Um, so let's see how they need to be hooked up. Um, the explanation is really good. Um, so what you do is you take all of the address. Is you take the addresses need to be yellow. So we're gonna make some of these gates yellow, and in the um, thing of the interface, it says that you need to make connections um, towards the least significant bit and then towards that. So let's do the same for the data input, which is blue. So towards the least significant bit and then there. Um, then there is the output, which is purple. So that's if it's an output, it's from the least significant bit then to the rest. So it also is like the least significant bit that's directly connected and the rest is connected in series. Um, so these can all be hooked up to some switches. And we still need to connect up a few more things. Um, specifically, we need to connect up a red reset. You don't really have to. I am going to connect it. So let's take one of those gates, paint them red, connect it to a button and a reset. Let's take a cyan right and a pink a read input. Now, we kind of always want to have read turned on, and then there's going to be a button for right. So let's reset it, turn on read, and let's say, let's, let's write a one. Oh, it would help to connect up that. Uh, oh, um, yeah, so this is, of course, all quick logic. So you need to make sure that the quick logic is actually uh, running. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, so see, that's now written. We can now go to a different address. Uh, write something else there. Let's go back to the original address. And that's still the original data. And I can press the big old reset button and it resets everything. Um, so, so that's the memory block for you. Um, one limit is that it's only 30 bits. So maximum of 30 bits in the address and in the data. Um, which is, I, I don't think that's a limit that's going to be problematic for anyone anytime soon. There's also some like cool functionality where you can like import and export all of the data from this RAM to a file on your computer. So uh, you can do some really cool stuff with that, with like importing and exporting data from like some different program you wrote that's like running on your computer instead of in Scrub Mechanic. Really cool. Um, but that's it for the Logic Tools and Parts mod. Um, I'm going to make another video that's going to go over all of the other like smaller mods that I use for Scrap Mechanic Logic. Um, I still don't really have an author yet, so I guess like join my Discord server. Um, because I have the list of all of the mods I use over there. Um, so yeah, check it out. Bye.